had an award for best inspiring newcomer. I would give it to this next competitor. Making his Olympia debut from the USA, Patrick Moore. And this was the guy. It's the 2019 Mr. Olympia, and there's a ton of excitement surrounding who would be the new Olympia champ, seeing as how Sean Roden wouldn't be competing. Would it be Brandon Curry? Ruli Winkler? William the Conqueror? The 2019 Olympia brought a lot of anticipation, and with that anticipation came some pleasant surprises on show day. Like Seabum becoming the new face of classic physique, Hadi Chupan bringing back 90s conditioning, and a new face in open bodybuilding named Patrick Moore. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, you may be wondering, what was so special about Patrick Moore? Well, for starters, Patrick brought amazing conditioning. He was probably one of the better conditioned athletes on that stage, and it was pretty clear the moment he stepped out. He also showcased beautiful structure and aesthetics, which really stood out at the finals because he came back drier and harder. Not to mention, his color was also on point. Patrick was lacking a bit in the size department, but this wasn't a big deal because he made up for it in all other aspects of his package. Now, Patrick finished 10th out of 16 competitors at this show, which may not seem impressive at face value, but when you consider that this was his first Olympia and he placed ahead of some bigger names, it was clear that Patrick had a ton of potential and everybody could see it. He was a former NPC USA champion and dominated the 2019 Cali Pro to get him to the Olympia. And it was refreshing to see yet another aesthetic physique in the open. Hell, he was even compared to none other than Ronnie Coleman. He's Ronnie Coleman-like back when Ronnie Coleman was coming up as an amateur. Tiny waist, he's got the detail. He's going to have to pull that Ronnie Coleman thing and just blow up one year and surprise everyone. He would be that dark horse in the future. You know, he's a smaller name. He was really one of the standout guys for me. When I saw him come out on stage, I was like, wow, this guy's extremely impressive. Like I said, the lines and the small waist, um, probably the smallest waist on that stage and probably I would even say one of the best V-tapers in men's open bodybuilding today. After that year's Olympia, the Patrick Moore hype train was full steam ahead, and the expectations for him were at an all-time high, something that we know can be much more of a curse than a blessing in a lot of cases. And unfortunately for Patrick, that 2019 Olympia package would haunt the rest of his career, because every showing after that would draw comparisons to 2019. Could he be bigger? Could he bring better conditioning? How well could he compare with more size? These were all questions that would plague his entire career. At his next showing, which was the 2020 Arnold Classic, Patrick placed 10th and brought a package that was not on the level of 2019. In fact, that would be the case for his next two shows where he would take 6th at the New York Pro and 4th at the Cali Pro. Now, these aren't horrible placings by any stretch, but to the fans who had premium seats on the Patrick Moore hype train, they were very unsatisfying. So unsatisfying, in fact, that the narrative that Patrick Moore should move down to classic physique began to form, a narrative that he took exception to. That's classic human nature for people who aren't strong, they aren't mentally strong, uh, to, to step up to something when something gets hard, they back down. Uh, that, that's mental weakness. You know, that's a very weak state of mind. Oh, I can't make it happen here. I failed a couple times. Let me just go down to where it's easier. Look, there's no question that Patrick Moore has the structure and aesthetics to be a great classic bodybuilder. His exceptionally round deltoids, excellent waist to lat ratio, and full biceps give him a classic look that always make him stand out. Just not for the best reasons in the open. Sure, aesthetics are great to look at, but in modern open bodybuilding, they're probably third or fourth on the list of winning qualities for an open guy. And every time Patrick has stepped on stage with bigger guys, they always outmuscle him. In terms of sheer mass and density, Patrick has been struggling to keep up with the elite which is the main reason why this classic physique narrative started floating around in the first place. Now, that narrative dissipated a little bit after Patrick won the 2021 Cali Pro, improving on his package from a year prior. However, that momentum did not carry him to the top 10 at the O, because in 2021, he placed 14th out of 15 competitors, regressing from his 10th place finish at his previous Olympia. Hoping to be able to regain some type of momentum in his career, Patrick competed at the 2021 Legion Sports Fest, a show that he should have placed decent in. But not only did Patrick place 10th, but he lost to Regan Grimes by a wide margin. Regan Grimes, who he had beaten at the 2021 Olympia. In fairness, Regan did nail his conditioning at this show, and it was probably his best showing as a pro even to this day. Although Patrick seems to have added some size from his previous showing, he lacked the detail and sharpness that some of the other guys in the lineup brought. He also lost to a guy named Joe Seaman. 
But in all seriousness, I think Patrick's struggles to ascend to the elite in the open class really stems from not being able to add the size needed at the rate that he would need to add it to really be competitive. When you look at his side by sides from the 2019 Olympia and that Legion Sports Fest, you do notice some growth, but relative to the rate at which the competition is growing, it's just not enough. Now, after that Legion Sports Fest, there was clearly a ton of talk around Patrick considering he was one of the most hyped up guys in all of open bodybuilding for a while, and he hadn't been living up to the massive expectations placed on him. And the pressure was definitely starting to get to him at some capacity because Patrick made a post declaring that he would be taking the 2022 season off and not step on stage until 2023. And in that very post, he stated that the reason why he hadn't been placing well was because of sponsors? A lot of you have asked why I have never taken time off. And the number one reason, dot, 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 sponsors. As an athlete, you have an obligation to represent them to the best of your ability. So after that, he says he's going to not be on stage until 2023 and actually take an off season or just not even go on stage again. Yet he is still sponsored. And but he's basically blaming his lack of, you know, high placement on the fact that he has not had the ability to take an off season and he's always prepping and he puts it on the sponsor. The glaring and obvious problem with this excuse was that it wasn't really valid because basically every single one of his fellow athletes also has sponsors, which to me puts them on an equal playing field when it comes to responsibilities. Presenting them to the best of your ability is generating fucking revenue. That's why they sponsor you and you being on the team is a revenue driving marketing tool to do that. And does that entail competing perpetually around the fucking clock 24 seven every single year without taking an off season? Well, in the age of social media, I do not really see this to be relevant at fucking all, to be honest. Nowadays, a lot more goes into it. And there are a lot of guys who have amazing, insane physiques who just like don't earn shit because they are not seen as, you know, interesting to follow, you know, relatable. They have no fucking information whatsoever. They don't. I understand that not every bodybuilder wants to have the responsibility of creating content as well as competing full time on top of whatever other career they may have. But in this growing media age, content is king, especially for bodybuilders, personal brands, and especially for promoting your sponsors. Now I'm not sponsored yet, but what I do know is that an athlete sponsor relationship requires mutual and equal effort on both sides. And being a sponsored athlete is basically a full time job. So placing blame on a responsibility that you signed up for really isn't the wave. This is something that Patrick realized, given the fact that he went back and edited that post. I realized as I pulled up IG today, well right now, that he edited this post and took out the sponsor part. And I was questioning my mind and memory for a second because it's not that great. I was like, okay, maybe I got to reread this. Maybe I read it wrong or dictated it wrong, but nope. Pat, 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 we gotta talk. What it really comes down to is how important the growth of your personal brand is to you. And some guys can balance it much better than others. And from the outside looking in, it just seems like Patrick has had some difficulty doing that. And while we're on the topic of sponsors, Patrick has been through a few of them, starting out with LeBrotter Nutrition in the early days, then moving to Yamamoto Nutrition, Unlock Supplements, and now recently signing with Biotech Nutra, a relatively small and unknown supplement company. He has been repping his clothing sponsor, Dark Sport, pretty well, so props to him for that. Now, I wish this video could have a more optimistic ending, but very recently, Patrick tore his Achilles. How it happened is unknown, but Nick Trajilli reported the injury on his channel before Patrick went public with it. Now, it's important to note that Nick did reach out to Patrick to get confirmation from him, but did not have much success. Now, I did reach out to Pat, and unfortunately, I did not get an answer from him. All I did was get an attitude, and he did not want to talk about it, and he was very uncomfortable when I asked him about it. Patrick then denied the injury altogether, not just to Nick directly, but to the fans as well. Now, if there's one thing about Nick Trajilli is that he's usually on point when it comes to making sure that his reporting is as accurate as possible. And he revealed some more details about the injury. I would never have reported that knowing the severity it could cause to your sponsors and to your career without knowing it's 100% true. Probably a dozen people from that gym verify that, yeah, he's on a scooter. <laughs> he personal trains here. He's riding on a scooter. And then once he got off the scooter, he started to have one shoe on the gym. Just one shoe. I don't know. That's what he was doing in the gym that he trains at. Combine this with the post that Patrick made on Instagram announcing the Achilles tear, and it makes for a pretty puzzling story. I mean, why deny such a major injury? It's not something you can hide forever, as not just a well-known bodybuilder, but as someone who's seen by members of the general public. Members who know exactly who you are. 
The only reason I can think of is that Patrick probably didn't like the fact that Nick was planning on breaking the story, so he stalled by denying the injury altogether, which ultimately did not work in his favor. Because it does make him look a little silly and petty, but I think with time, it'll definitely blow over. Oh, and can we talk about this dude casually power squatting 10 plates with a torn Achilles? I mean, either this injury isn't as severe as we think it is, or Patrick Moore just built completely different. Let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's built different. I don't think that Patrick is completely done as a bodybuilder. I think once he can rehab from this Achilles injury, he'll have one more legitimate push to break into the elite. A feat which won't be easy given the amount of quality competitors that are rising through the ranks and that will be rising through the ranks soon. But ultimately, I think Patrick has had a tough time living up to those really high expectations placed on him, which is the case for the vast majority of athletes who experience that same level of hype. I do wish Patrick a very speedy recovery and hope that he can bring that 2019 wow factor one more time before he officially calls it quits. Let me know your thoughts on Patrick Moore. If you like this video, consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you know when I drop my next video. I'm Large Kofi, thank you for watching.